you know, black folks, and basically one of our webcams, one of humanity's webcams, tax dollars from some place or some money paid for this somewhere, and you get to see magical, beautiful aurora color action at 13,000 plus feet, at least 13.5, probably 13.7, 13.8, and watch the spectacle of color aurora action. Night sky in Hawaii. And CME action hitting our aurora. And colored stars that are normally at the North and South Pole. And you do have uh, moisture here on this camera, but I mean, otherwise you can see through the moisture and see what's actual light propagation, okay? And there we go again. Play it some more. There's moisture on it, but you can actually easily differentiate the water droplets from what's actually up there. And we always know that that little dark object right there, and other dark, and that dark object there, and we have a lot of stuff that is stagnant position to Earth. Smaller objects and with different and more supergiant light and CMEs from outer space, which is basically the supergiant's main sequence where the sun is at, hangs out with over 200, 100 dead stars at least, and way more than that because there's tiny ones. Earth was a star once, and we are very tiny. So there's tiny stars, big stars, all kinds of different sizes. People are in control of certain scientific organizations always want to put their name on that and then it sticks. Okay. So this is colorization from nighttime sky at 13.5 at least thousand feet over in Hawaii. And aurora action, colorization, you get in just about everything of the rainbow from out of our aurora with CME action from outer space. And then I haven't even paid attention and don't even really care. Uh, this is 1900 hours there that it ends up with being uh, Hawaii time. So there's lots of stuff aligned with the moon, and you can get on the inner. Uh, you can get on your if you have satellite TV. You can get on certain. I'm not going to advertise for any certain satellite company, but there is satellite that has a camera on the moon from one of their satellite feed. Uh, satellites that they use for their signals for selling you cable TV. So there are some people that have cable TV that they can watch the moon at night. Actually it's 24-7 I think. I think you can even see it during the daylight. So there's lots of stuff that's aligned with the moon. It's been aligned and slowly aligning with the moon for a long time and we are in one of the big bangs cycle of space and time. So those are water droplets of duh. And then you can go ahead and go to the stuff that I've showed you, and you can go figure out what rises. Anybody can go research and figure out what rises at what time in Hawaii at that Hawaii military time right there. That's 5 a.m. in the morning there, but and when it gets into the teens, everybody knows how to... Someone should educate people on military time. It's very easy to do. There's 24 hours in a day, folks. When you get to 2400, that's it. One tick after it is o o o o. You're starting a new day. 24 hours in a day, ladies and gentlemen. When you hit 24, the next second is 00001. Okay? So, beautiful aurora action from a telescope over in Hawaii. We love those islands over there so much that I don't even get into saying this name and that name with because uh, it's nice and peaceful over there. It's Hawaii time when you're over there, ladies and gentlemen. It's called life. You live your life, not the rat race. You relax when you go to Hawaii and be nice to the natives. Mahalo. Aloha. So there is your nighttime sky. Actually, at that altitude, they're getting just about all the time. So, because that's local Hawaii time, I think. Either that or no, uh, you know, I'm not going to say I'm wrong. If someone can put a comment in and see what they have the go that clock going at, is it going at UTC time or is it going? And I've never wasted time to even go and see. 
doesn't really matter. You're going to see aurora action here. You know that's nighttime when you have that. That's right. That's nighttime because you, I mean, you know that's nighttime. And then you get some beautiful aurora action. So basically, I that you know, it just makes common sense that that's on UTC time. That clock is on UTC, 24-hour military time, folks. Okay, so that's more than likely Zulu Greenwich time. That clock it just makes sense because I'm playing it back here, I'd hit, and you will come up onto the colorization of night. There you go, night time. So and it's only six on the on the time clock up there. So basically, that is. And you have the date there. It's the 22nd. Okay, so that's UTC time, folks. UTC military time. Zulu time on that telescope. So, Bino's not playing on tricks on you, and the scientists ain't playing you no tricks on you. That's our aurora. And we are getting some wild action. 13,500 plus feet, probably 13,700, something like that, this one's at. I know it's not much below 13,000 feet. I know that most all of those telescopes are at 13 plus, 13.2 and up. So, beautiful aurora action from Hawaii. There's nighttime sky, and as you see, you get glimpses of the stars that are showing color that we normally only see at the north and the south pole, i.e. We'll have to go through the aurora action, which is basically CME action on our auroras. And we have a lot of coronal, which is basically just like an eyeball of Earth. And remember that that's UTC time, so that's more than likely the sun or one of our suns coming up. Okay, so, and actually you can probably even differentiate one from the other when it's coming up. one and then another. There you go. So, uh, the colors of the stars, there you go, the blues, whether it's an asteroid belt or that Oort cloud that's over top of Earth, but basically being shot down, as you can see, you'll see those blue ones. And like I say, if you watch the moon, you will see those colorization of those stars also. And you can get on, I'm not advertiser for any, it's satellite one of the satellites that sell cable TV has on channel, I'm not going to say in my area because then it'll go, oh, that's exactly where he's at. So it's in the 200s, let's put it that way, on that certain satellite company. And not advertising for them, but they do have a camera that shoots off of one of their cameras that they use to FCC legally transmit you TV, cable TV, and you pay for it. And they, you can see the moon. They have a 24-7 camera on the moon on one of their satellites up in space. So this is Hawaii footage from the telescope, one of the webcams. Colorization of your aurora and or, and or stars that are moving and spinning quickly and also that we get in Hawaii, um, in Japan, over on the uh, volcano in Japan. And then boom -o, volcano, boom Let's see what we got for a date on this shot. And yes, the 21st was calm. Okay, and this is the 20th, and this might have been the beginning of the calm. And as you see, you got the meatball, and you've got the meatball. Duh, everybody knows the meatball by now. Humongous. Huge, the hugest damn thing you're probably ever going to see unless they show us one of the other ones. And there you go with the CME and stuff over by... Coming off the sun and the supergiants over there from Ve towards Venus and off in that area. Okay, and then let me show you. Here's what you normally see of the sun, and this is fresh. Actually, not that fresh. It goes up to the 20th, I think. Some of February and some of now. February goes up to, yep, something in the 20s. About a month. You see of sun action there. So, all right. 
And it does really make sense that triangulation-wise, yes, Earth should be something like right at the corner of this, where this one pixel zooms in on that pixel, okay, on all that star cluster in action over there. But the idea that Earth should be somewhere here in this corner area, right, of, or even covered in, in the blackness. But the idea that triangulated, as you know, if you go to Beacon, the sun, the sun is hitting this on the Mercury and Venus on this side bright and just like it hits earth we get our sunlight up here somewhere triangulated in triangulation somewhere we are somewhere in a V behind Mercury and Venus okay up here so we're safe up here meatballs there Mercury's there and Mercury's safe the meatball doesn't hit it and something this huge like this doesn't just show up overnight and even if it hasn't been back around here for billions of years but we pretty much know it's been up there for a long time they don't ever talk about it it's the meatball we don't talk about that and it's there and basically every time it moves wherever it moves it's already got flies on it from whatever it's ever run into whenever it's ever moved anywhere if it moves at all or if it just stays there all the time but we know factually from seeing shots that it moves okay and it is real okay so there you go and we should be somewhere you draw a V from here to here somewhere either high or low and earth is nice and safe in a little rabbit hole somewhere here okay somewhere there Because this latest shot, as you know, we know we're on Earth. We know we're all right, okay? This latest shot here, you see Saturn way the hell over here, so it takes a long time to get to Saturn. And it only takes two years to get to Mars right now. Curiosity will be there in two, within two years, okay? Curiosity is well on its way to look up at Mars. And the Chinese have something up like a space station all to their own or something up there up towards Mars or it's on its way to Mars but we believe we've been told that it's already up there so anyway the Chinese have a space station up there and we just have curiosity going up there so either either both combined is good okay get a little peeky poo out there in space military lingo it's called scouts scout it out scout it out so anyway the Chinese have got what they call to be a space station of their own up there uh, and then we have curiosity going up there and we've had other stuff on Mars okay so and no matter what to the south you get this and you can see the clock and the time okay you get that and that's the full screen it's not really gonna matter if I zoom in a little bit because I zoom in I'll lose so basically, uh, we can step back on that, and it basically should be the sun coming up. Now, with that being said, you watch the clock, I'm just clicking back through this real fast. All right, we're just going to keep zipping here. Come on. Because the movie play didn't play very good. It plays real good if I watch the other channel. You'll see it in a second what I'm talking about because they've sped that camera up. Because there's really not too much to look at. And then you can, okay, so at, that's not the sun, okay? So that's what you get at that time. And I will go back for that for you so you can see the times. At least I thought I was going back. Okay, remember that camera shot was from to the south. This is go. This shoots to the north, and this plays pretty fast. Should be able to get this in before the video gets over here. And if not, I will reappropriate it. So when it goes black and white, folks, it's go it just adjusts to light. Okay, it's always color. It's just at nighttime. Remember, this was to the north. The other shot was from the south. Differentiate, remember, and it was smaller to the south. Remember.